And now, coming to you live from Huntsville Atlantic Studios, it's Pop Culture Philosophers. And here are your hosts, Rockin' Robbie Billups and John Hammertime Horseshoe. Hey everybody, it's the Pop Culture Philosophers. Coming to you always from the Huntsville Attic. Tonight we're going to talk about heist films. I'm John Hammertime Holshue. With me always, Rockin' Robbie Billups. Hey John, how are you? I'm doing awesome. I am too, and I hope all the listeners are. With us tonight, we've got Justin Goldsmith. hey Thanks for being here. You're welcome. And we also have, first time on our, our show, our humble little show, Timothy Gorman. Everybody, hi everyone in Radio Land. <coughs> Timothy, tell everybody why you're here. Why are you qualified to be here with us, the pop culture philosophers? Uh, I, I love movies. Um, I watch movies about twenty four seven. I listen to podcasts as well. So anything and everything about movies and podcasts, I'm all about. Absolutely. Glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Pop Culture Philosophers, where we aim to be insightful, try to be positive, and hopefully we come out, come out, come out, entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard it right. Robbie's coming out on this episode. Yeah. So I, we're talking about heist films. I guess that begs the question, why heist films? What's the appeal of heist films? I'm going to start with uh, Goldsmith. What's the appeal of heist films? The, I think out of all the different genres of film, heist films, if you really think about what's in them, have the most broad appeal because they're usually very intelligent because, you know, they're planning stuff out the whole time and executing it. Uh, there's comedy. There's pretty much you can find a heist film in any other subgenre like comedy or sci-fi or anything like that. And, but I think the most interesting thing to go with our uh, philosophy for tonight is that when you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. <laughs> and I think that just really resonates with people. Yeah, it's funny because in the early, you know, heist films have been around since the beginning of film. In 1903, Great Train Robbery, that silent film, came out, right? Until like the 50s, though, there was like this, this like code in Hollywood that you couldn't like show the technical mechanics of crime and that they always had to get caught and stuff like that. Right. That crime didn't pay. Yeah. And I just, that's really neat. Like at first, even when it's just crime to me, you know, it's, it's that crime is appealing to people because who doesn't want to just pull off a few heists and then be set. Right. Yeah. For life. Yeah. In theory. Absolutely. And so they're about crime. So I think it's it's like horror films, you know. You want to be scared, but not you don't want to be in danger, so you watch a horror film. So you you want to have the thrill of being a criminal, of of getting the quick, you know, heist and 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 get away and 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 all that stuff. Even though a lot of these movies don't end very well for these people, I would say, right? Absolutely. And and early on it it it, it was like a reminder that crime didn't pay. They were very like propaganda like these films, you know, like, "Ah, stay clean, kids." Crime doesn't pay. But in the 50s, the code <coughs> lightened up. Is that Nixon? Is that yeah, Nixon telling was. people to stay? <laughs> <laughs> but Justin mentioned that, you know, these movies are everything. They're comedies and, and they're dramas and they're action movies. And I think the, the cool, the staying power of the heist film is that it can blend into any genre to stay fresh and relevant. Like Westerns have come and gone. Superhero films, it's a new fad right now, right? It might have staying power, but right now it's new. So many of these types of films come and go. The war film used to be way huge in Hollywood. Not so much anymore. And it's it's like the heist film's always there. And it's because it can adapt. It can evolve. It's the it's the most, you know, survival of the fittest. It's like made it through. Well, even People Under the Stairs starts off as a heist film. Yeah. They go in there to steal and it doesn't quite end that way if you've seen <laughs> People under the stairs. Uh, Timothy, why the appeal? Heist films. I think I think just in addition of what Robbie was saying, because you've got, you know, the little person. It doesn't matter what it is that that you're trying to obtain. It could be a diamond. It could be, you know, gold medallions, bullions, whatever it is. 
the thing about it is is that you're trying to get something that you can obtain from another person that that happens to not actually i mean they take it for granted and and you being the underprivileged person being the little man on the totem pole you're going to be like well i'm going to root for that guy and i'm thinking that if he can take it and and get away with that heist then that's that's a great movie to me we all in some way want to stick it to the man don't yeah. we that's what i exactly feel yeah <laughs> well I even they, do they even say that in a lot of films like all oh, these banks are insured it's okay to rob these banks or to a lot steal of people this think diamond. that too yeah you know and once the code laxed up in the 50s and they had movies like the asphalt jungle and they went into like kubrick's the killing there's a french film i've never seen called like R rafifi yes or something like that and and it's it's evolved and at that point you i think i love heist films and I think they're endearing because you fall in love with these people. These are people that are villains in every other movie. You know, like, look at a Die Hard's a heist film, right? But you don't really think that Hans Gruber should get Oh, away yeah, with you it. don't root for him. But you want yeah. Danny Ocean to get through. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You, you, you want those guys to make it through A-OK. -okay. You want Paul Newman and, you know, Robert Redford to be OK and to get away with the heist. And, and like <coughs> we were saying eloquently... Timothy, stick it to the fucking man. <laughs> and you know, if Bruce Willis hadn't been in Die Hard, if, he, if his character hadn't been in that building, the story might have been painted a little differently. Absolutely. We'd have seen it from Hans's <laughs> point of view, and we might have been rooting for Hans. Yeah, <laughs> and that would be like a very comedic film as well, right? <laughs> All right, then I we talked a little bit about why they appeal to people, and I think we hit it right home. But actually, John, anything else to add there? No, I was just going to say the same thing. You know, it crosses genres. So you can, you do have the comedies. You do have, uh, there is horror, and few and far between. There is, you know, there's even like romance. Like, oh, they fall in love by stealing this giant ruby. <laughs> um, but uh, it's the payoff too. People, you root for that guy because ultimately people live vicariously through these characters in films. And the concept that you could plan something out and then just, you know, steal a bunch of money or a giant diamond then just nobody wants to go to a shitty job every day and work nine to five they want that big payoff so just like winning the lotto man except maybe you're making a movie out winning the lotto is not as exciting as stealing a, a giant ruby or something yeah all right so we talked about the appeal of heist films and i think we really all hit that on pretty good um what to you makes a great heist film what elements need to be there in order for it to be to you a fantastic brilliant super fun balls to the wall heist film timothy i i'm gonna talk a little bit uh a little more verbose i guess i'm gonna i'm gonna say that i like a bloodbath i like i like a double cross and i like it when Ooh. not everyone is going to get along they probably have the best intentions and they think that this plan is going to work out but then all of a sudden there's some swerve somebody thinks that he he wants a bigger cut and and that that's the kind of movie that i would like to see in a heist like the first five minutes of the dark night yeah right <laughs> um yeah there are a lot of of heist films that deal with that like you know they basically have the first acts like the setup they're getting the crew together Mm -hmm. uh, the second act is like the actual heist itself. And the third act is the aftermath. And it usually involves like people getting like paranoid or people, you know, trying to double cross each other. It just ends bad. Mistakes are made, you know, all kinds of shit like that. <laughs> I, I love stuff like that. But you like the bloodbath. So you love Reservoir Dogs, don't you? Reservoir Dogs yeah. is on the top <laughs> of my list. All right. What about you, Justin? What do you think? What makes a great heist film to you? In order, and we're going to get into this later when we do our top fives and stuff. Uh, it's very important to me that a heist film have the planning stage and the execution stage in it. Okay. The because it's the whole. When I think of a heist film, like if I was going to sit down and write a heist film, the first scene that would be in my head, other than the actual event happening, is them you know, sitting around the long table with the whiteboard or chalkboard or whatever and planning it out. And like, this is what you're doing. You're doing this. And then you wait 30 seconds and then yeah, exactly. You like the science behind it, right? Yeah. Like the, the, yeah. And like the, when they, in some of the movies, when they start the actual heist, it'll be like, as they're explaining the final plan. So it'll be like almost the first part of the, 
the heist is narrated as him, like he's describing the plan as you're seeing it start to unfold. Like I really, I really dig those scenes in in all these movies. I think that an intricate heist is very essential yeah. to a heist film. Now there are some heist films like Reservoir Dogs, which we had mentioned, skips the heist entirely. But a great film. I think that's one of the brilliances of that film. Oh yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I love like in Ocean's Eleven how intricate that plan actually turns out to be, and they fool even you, the audience. Yeah. You know, even in the original, and the original has like a down ending. Apparently, I've actually never seen the original, but Mike, mm-hmm. the voice Matthews, was talking to me about it earlier today. But I like those movies. I like the clever heist. I think the ingenious plan is an is it essential. I think and he's a very clever, witty script. But I love the heist films that have an ensemble cast because every heist film's got it on oh, most of them where you have your crew that you got to get together. You got your guy who can crack the safe. You you know, your wheel man. You know, you got mm-hmm. the guy who's like the the technical guy who's going to like hack into the computers or turn off the alarms. You have to throw all these different personalities together and they break down into the archetypes that we see throughout all of fiction. Yeah. D- don't forget the cute blonde, uh, Robbie. There's always the cute blonde. Oh yeah, somewhere. there's always you know male or female. There's mm-hmm. always the cute blonde. The distraction. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and like yeah, and, and like the goofy guy, you know, like in the Ocean's movies, you got uh, Casey Affleck and Scott Con, you right. know, that that fit, fit that role together. Yeah. Um, so I think a great en- ensemble. You know, you got your main character and it's his story, but having a bunch of cool characters around him is really essential to me. John, my illustrious co-host. Curious to know what makes a great heist film to you. Like you said already, a story. You need a good story. You need something original. I don't want to see the same people robbing the same bank with the same old. We dug through the ground. Who cares? So I do want... I mean, originally that was good, but I like more and more clever storytelling. Um, case in point, The Lookout. So I do appreciate more clever storytelling. And then on top of that, I want a good cast, man. Give me a great cast. And when you... When, like Ocean's Eleven... Maybe it doesn't make my top five, but it's a good film. And on top of that, hell of a cast. And not only did you have all these stereo, you know, what I'm saying you had all these different, uh, not stereotypes, but um, you had the the bank, you know, the guy that could, you know, tap into the. I mean, yeah, they, they are stereotypes. Yeah. They are tropes, but yeah. they they work. Yeah, mm. but but you also had a great cast behind those characters too. Absolutely, which helps. Yeah, you know, Ocean's Eleven to me, that's like the most fantastic ensemble cast to me in a heist film. I also really like the Guy Ritchie movies like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch. Yeah. They have great cast too. Yeah, they, they always do. Um, John, I think you got some social media. Yeah, let's go to the uh, face page and uh, see what the uh, the kids are saying about the popular heist movies. <laughs> we <laughs> actually asked them, uh, what's your favorite heist movies? Steven Burgett says Reservoir Dogs, which we discussed a second ago. Great film. Don't see the heist, but a phenomenal film. Michael Finley says a tie between Snatch and Fast Five. Fast Five? Like the one the Fast and Furious Yeah, movies. Fast oh. and Furious film. Adam Lander says Inside Man. Alan Brooks Foster said Heat. Hmm. And Richard Warder said The Killing or Jackie Brown. Mm, good. Good answers. Mm. Great. Yeah, great films. Yeah. Great. There's a lot of great heist films. I, I, you know, before we were talking about doing the show, I didn't realize how many great heist films there were. And there's just... And people... I mean, everybody can name a handful of heist films that they adore. Oh, yeah. I, you know, we're getting, you know, later on, we got our top five coming up. And I thought this would be an easy one. And it actually wasn't. So we do have the top five coming up. We're about to take a quick break. Uh, please enjoy the break and pay attention to it. We work hard for these promos. <laughs> coming up, we got some of our favorite characters from heist films, the worst heist films, and, of course, the prize. What the heist films are all about. Be right back on Pop Culture Philosophers here live in the Huntsville Attic. Hey gang, Rock and Robbie here. I want to take a moment to talk to you about our YouTube channel. Make sure you log into YouTube and subscribe to Pop Culture Philosophers. We have lots of great content that you can only find on YouTube. So why not take a second and subscribe so you don't miss a thing? We really appreciate it and to show our gratitude. We will be having a huge giveaway the moment we hit 100 subscribers. So share the channel with all of your friends and encourage them to subscribe. You could be the lucky winner. In fact, we're all winners here 
here, right? Once again, be sure to subscribe to the Pop Culture Philosophers channel on YouTube for tons of great content and very exclusive content as well. Welcome back to Pop Culture Philosophers. We're talking about heist films. And in a second, we're going to talk about our our most hated or worst heist films, in our opinion. But first, Robbie, I think you wanted to talk about your favorite characters from heist films? Yeah, let's, let's get into this. Because one of the things I love about heist films are the characters, the cast, the, the actors who portray these characters so eloquently, so well, that they come to life and we root for them. And we experience the thrill of this crime adrenaline rush through these characters. What are some of your favorite characters from heist films? And I'm going to start because I'm very, very anxious to know. Justin, favorite heist characters? I picked out two characters in particular. Um, one of them is i wouldn't say he's my favorite but uh thomas crown is an interesting one to me all right he's this guy he's rich he's got everything he needs and he's just gets real bored and starts stealing stuff he just gets fine just, art yeah. even yeah yeah so just the idea of that character is real interesting to me but i think probably my favorite character from a heist film has got to be danny ocean oh you, you got me Danny is Ocean yours? is one of mine. Well, Dude, I have I have a few too, but yeah, Danny Ocean. He's so like, like the the reason I like heist films, like I was saying earlier, is because of the planning and you know once you get to do it, it's it goes off without a hitch. To plan, yeah. everything's and in motion, you, and this guy just like is just cool as a cucumber any, the whole time. Any particular actor, George Clooney or the <clears throat> Frank Sinatra? I haven't seen the original ones. I really wanted to watch them before the podcast, yeah. but I didn't. I, I'm a huge Rat Pack guy, yeah. and I've never seen the original Ocean's Eleven. Shame. I know I'm going to love it. Let me flagellate myself. Anyway, George Clooney is in, another, <laughs> is in another heist film. Really? Directed by Steven Soderbergh. And that would be Out of Sight. And I love his character, Jack Foley, in that movie. So George Clooney, who I have a huge man crush on. I just recently saw Hail Caesar, specifically because it was Coen oh, Brothers. Oh, really? And because was it was good? I loved it. That's, I really did. That looked did it excellent. come out this week? I liked it. It's not going to be everybody's favorite, though, to be honest with you. But I love George Clooney. I love both of those characters, especially <laughs> Danny Ocean. Speaking of cool, of a, cool as a cucumber, like Danny Ocean and George Clooney. Timothy Gorman, what's, who are some of your favorite heist uh, movie characters? In the early 2000s, there was a movie called The Score, and uh, I, I'm a real big fan of Edward Norton. Oh, and, yeah. And Edward Norton played this guy named Jack Teller. So in, in the movie The Score, uh, which was based out of Montreal, he, he was actually casing um, this customs uh, warehouse in, in Montreal, and he was trying to uh, figure out what was so good about this uh, this scepter. So he actually was doing. He was pulling a ruse for about you know two months, and he was trying to explain uh, to his other character Marlon Brando he was going to play a mentally disabled uh, janitor. So he was pulling off this ruse. He was casing the area, and he he just he was always trying to be a a, a uh, one upsman, and he was basically trying to get the scepter away from Robert De Niro. But uh, the reason why I mention him because obviously Edward Norton has been in so many different films: Fight Club, American History X. But he's just has a, a stretch of the appeal, and and it just caught me out of surprise how the score he did so well with those veteran actors: De Niro, Brando, and and he was just like the you know the the starting guy he uh he just wanted to show how uh he might be the new guy on the block but he's willing to risk it to 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 get the big prize which was that scepter 
that was in the customs house. And now you guys don't have to see the film. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, there's a twist and then a twist. But I enjoyed the film. It was a good film and a great cast. I agree. But or, uh, Edward Norton definitely, uh, he, he spotlight. He, was, he showed up. Edward Norton is great in so many films. Speaking of being great in so many films, well, uh, Timothy Dalton's not <laughs> yeah, here. Say, However, <laughs> John, what are some of your absolute favorite uh, characters in heist films? I was going to say one that I, and not a favorite, but I was going to say something that you see all the time. And it's almost cliche. You get that character that he just got out of the clink. You know, he just got out of jail and he just wants to go back to his regular life. You know, he made a mistake. He regrets it. And he's got to pull off one last job because the big boss man stole his wife or his dog or his, you know, kidnapped his kid or something. So he's got to pull off another heist yeah. against his will, but or he's his, the only one that can pull off or the Or his chimichanga? Yeah, or his chimichanga. <laughs> so, so I do like that. It, it gets a little old, but you do see that character a lot. Um, a specific character, which isn't this type of character at all, that I really like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy. I, I, don't, I don't like that same character over and over again. I think that's a cheap way to make a... You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because you feel bad for him. Like, oh, he gave it up, and now he's got to do... Okay. But a different character altogether would be Owen Wilson's character in Bottle Rocket, which I really like, Dignan. And he's he's just so naive, and he just wants to be a master thief, and he gets obviously involved with the wrong people. And honestly, go watch the <laughs> film again. And he's, just, he's not a very good person. No. <laughs> but it's a great film. It's a phenomenal film. And you can't help but like his character, even though he's naive, and even though he causes more trouble than anything else. You know, Bottle Rocket's a great film. Wes Anderson is a fantastic director. We did a episode of Smile or Else about Wes Anderson. It's up on the website, popculturephilosophers.com. Please go check it out. Another director's spotlight coming out this summer on the Coen Brothers. Very interesting. Can't wait to see that. John, that's, that's some good points there. I like that. I like that. Um, me, you know, I already talked about my George Clooney fetish. Um, but <laughs> obviously, I want to say everybody in the movie Snatch. Like every single character in that movie. <laughs> exactly. And if I had to pick out particulars, Brick Top. Oh. Very threatening villain. Mickey O'Neill, the Brad Pitt character, right? Because that's, mm -hmm. that's just funny. Yeah. And that's awesome. And a great performance. He, he was so understated in that movie. And he's not the main character. Turkish and all those guys are great, too. Yeah. But Bullet Tooth Tony, dude. Vinnie Jones. All right, before we move on, I got a little bit of social media that just popped up I want to talk about real quick. Clem Urban says, The Sting. Da -da 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 talk about a great cast. Wow. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, absolutely great movie. One of the most cinema, you know, like just absolutely perfect heist movies. James Donahoe, great friend of the show from Killing Time, says, It may seem unoriginal, but I love the remake of Ocean's Eleven. The love of my life, Alicia Marrow said, True romance, the score... Timothy, that's a shout out, right? And The Italian Job, the remake. Drew Matson, great friend of us and fellow pop culture <coughs> philosopher, said Ocean's Eleven in The Inside Man. Lance Allen from Dance Panda Comics said, is Guardians of the Galaxy one? Does that count? I said, I'm not going to count that. And he said, well, then if Alicia can say true romance, I'll agree with that. So we talked about some of the characters. Let's like talk about some of the prizes. Uh, or what what the main heist you know what they're what they're taking I think a bank job is one of the big ones but there are other ones if anybody wants to discuss uh, any in particular Robbie is there a particular heist or uh, a prize that sticks out to you or do you want to talk about bank jobs well first of all why bank jobs why so many why is that so popular I want to know Timothy what do you think uh, there's a lot of money in banks I heard okay Really? I mean, it's like, because bank rob. I mean, I guess bank robberies are kind of like one of the most common heists in a heist movie, right? Um, I like some of the other stuff, like Goldfinger, you know? Fuck it. Fort Knox. We're going to go straight to Fort Knox. Yeah. You know, that's well, a great one. Yeah. I love Inception. The heist of the mind, basically. That blows me away. That that's Stole a heist his film. free will. Yeah, you know? Yeah, right? But I like that movie. Way of the Gun. I don't... I didn't count it on my top five. I love Way of the Gun. I love that movie. Christopher McQuarrie, written and directed. Um, the heist in that movie is they steal an, an unborn child. Oh. I like that. And it's planned out. So it is a heist, but it's kind of – if I allow Way of the Gun, then Taken counts. Yeah, you open and, to a and, lot and, of kidnapping. And, yeah, and, and, and kidnapping will be its own thing. But and, and I think John will agree with this one, but Cars – 
I love car like Gone in sixty seconds, the the Fast and Furious franchise. You know, those mm. are some of the ones I think are cool. You know, Cars. I mean, it's not as original as The Mind or An Unborn Child, but my, you know, Cars are just super cool. I like the movie Gone in sixty seconds, the remake. I've never seen the original. There are a lot of remakes. <coughs> Of heist films, yeah. in which I've yeah. never seen the original, and I guess that's why they remade them. You know why? Is because there's only so many things that people can steal. I guess so, <laughs> so you right? Have to... You know, but those are some really cool ideas, and Goldfinger tops it though because the ultimate heist to me is Fort Knox. Yeah. yeah. Even though right now there's probably nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I would say. One one that I can uh, reflect on is. The movie Three Kings that has oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Clooney, uh, Ice Cube, and uh, who was the other guy? Oh, oh, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. And Spike and Jones. And Spike Jones. Yeah, yeah. Another great George Clooney heist movie. He's <laughs> done quite a few of these. <laughs> but anyway, this was set in uh, Desert Storm, um, and they were trying to find a uh, weapons cache and ended up getting all these gold uh, from Saddam's regime. So... Uh, obviously, you know, a little bit of sand and a little bit of heat. Uh, but I guess the end result is, yeah, a, lo- a lot of gold. So. Yeah. And that's a great movie because of the, the crisis of conscience that they have mm-hmm. at the end. And that movie gets way deeper than a lot of heist movies actually get, I think. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, bring up earlier, we were talking about banks. And I think the reason banks are such an easy target or an easy thing to make a movie about is because realistically, if you do a bank, you don't have to think about what you're going to do with the end. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to convert it to money. You're still a giant diamond. Who are you going to fence that to? Honestly, yeah. if Robbie and I went out and robbed a, uh, an art gallery today, I don't know what the hell I'd do with some of this art or who I would fence it to. Oh. I don't know anything about oh, fencing. Yeah. Well, we go to the Huntsville Museum of Art and be like, hey, we yeah. got the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah, what are we going to do? 50 so, bucks. And they just call the police. Yeah, 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we also don't know the value. I was going to say, we don't know the value. Yeah. I have yeah. no idea what this Picasso's yeah. worth. Well, I mean, we would I can probably Google it. damage it in the process. I don't know anything about storing fine art. But yeah, we kept this at Robbie's house and the cats tore into but it. But if you're an art thief, you know the art fencers. Yeah. But I get what you're saying, but... What about the uh, – I don't know. Is this a real thing? Because you see this in a lot of movies and shit, but like marked money in banks. like they always, Oh, they definitely do that. Uh, oh, so like, yeah. It, like, so, yeah, you steal all this money and you right. get away and, yeah, you can spend it. But if they mark it, yeah. then they can trace it. Yeah. They'll, they'll record and that's uh, Yeah. It's also like in the uh, – what they used to do because now they – I think they can irradiate bills and stuff like that so they can okay. be tracked. But like in the old older movies, like in the 90s and previous, you – they would like if the cops knew this money was going to be stolen, they'd put the the paint packs the in paint it and they'd pack, get in the yeah. car and they're like, yeah, let's. <laughs> and they open the bag and the paint goes everywhere. I, I don't know if this is part of it, but I think it is because it reminds me of what's the heist movie where Bill Murray plays the clown oh, with yes. Gina Davis? Because that happens Quick in that change. movie. Quick change. Quick that change. happens in that movie, I think. <laughs> I remember that movie very vaguely. It also happens in Pain and Gain. But, I mean, that's completely opposite of what a heist movie should be. But just in the middle of it, Dwayne The Rock Johnson happens to try to score some more money so then he can <laughs> uplift his cocaine habit. So, <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, he loses a he loses a big toe because he jumps in to wh- whatever river it is. And then he uh, an exploding pack of money just happens to go all over his Versace suit. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> Versace. Mm-hmm. Damn shame. The uh, yeah, so money and you. Yeah, I was gonna say you can also write that they'll record all the serials numbers off the bills too, and then yeah. then follow that. That's something they still do, and they've really have done that in history. Um, not just in films, but the you know the FBI and the uh, IRS and uh, have done that because the IRS has like an internal uh, enforcement. Um, so we can cut that whole part out actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna say one of my favorites. Is actually sneakers. the The box they steal oh. is that de- inc- uh, decryption. You know, it's an encryption decryptor, and it's ultimately can decrypt anything. And that's such a cool item to steal that you really and all these governments want it because it can decrypt anything. You could take over any country. You could redirect any airline. You know, it ultimately. I think that was a great item and something more original. Up until you get the mine for Inception, which is very original. Don't get me wrong. I think that was one of the more, most original items. Yeah, that's a good one. And uh, Dave Locke, good buddy of mine, said that's one of his favorite heist films. Sneakers. Today was Sneakers. Great yeah. film. Do you, do you guys consider National Treasure to be a heist film? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, absolutely. 
So with the dec- Declaration of Independence, definitely Nicholas. Yeah, Cage. that's actually a good. Yeah. Who the hell yeah. are you to offend that to? Yeah, I, right. I, I knew. I know there's more to it in that story. But can you imagine if you stole that and like I'm gonna sell it to the Canadians? Be like, we don't. Uh, <laughs> someone would obviously probably want to pay for that. Yeah, someone's yeah. looking for the. In fact, they may already have it. Oh my gosh. They may already have it. Who wouldn't know? Goldsmith, is there a particular item you want to talk about? Was um. The Thomas Crown affair, it, it was the paint, the, like the main one he was going after was the painting of the guy with the apple, right? I barely remember that movie. I watched, you're talking about the remake in 98. Yeah. I, I watched it when it first came out. I haven't seen it since then. Yeah, uh, I haven't either. I watched it just because I was like, James Bond's pretty, awesome. I'll watch this. Yeah. <laughs> and I, th- yeah. I worked at the theaters. So. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, the painting is called The Son of Man, and it's the, the one with the, it's just a guy standing there in a suit with a bowler yeah, hat. Yeah, with a bowler hat, and he's got yeah, the apple, with the in, front apple in front of him. Yeah. Uh, that's. It, I was talking about him earlier, how he's just a rich, bored guy who just starts stealing stuff, and that's. I like that. Yeah, um, that's another remake. Yeah. Tom, and yeah. That's, yeah, that's and, a lot of them. And also, I don't. <sighs> so he could have took up, like, collecting I, comics or stamps, some shit, but he's going to rob. Art, yeah. fine art. Going steal to the store is not fun. <laughs> Has anyone made a heist movie where someone steals like Detective Comics 27 or Action Comics number oh. one? Yeah, that's what I want to see. That would be Kevin Smith. I, I had a, it's I, already in the script. I oh, okay. A, I had a question for you guys, though, because I've never seen this movie. Uh, Swordfish. Have you seen it? Yeah. Not, not really, no. I think it's money. Is it's, it? It's I know Hugh it's, Jackman. I know that they're it's trying not, to... It's not a very good they're film. Trying to, no. Yeah, I know. They're trying to recruit this hacker to steal six billion dollars in unused government money so that they can use it to fight terrorism or something i've never seen it but is it a is it a heist movie i i would think it is it, I, yeah. I think it's considered a heist movie but yeah. i wouldn't say it's considered they recruit him against movie. his will well six billion dollars is a pretty uh, yeah is that's a pretty cool item yeah it's steal. a heist but it's ultimately it's about it's about timothy already the said the declaration of independence okay <laughs> that's cool too <laughs> I was just wondering if it qualifies because six billion dollars is a pretty sweet thing to steal. So I guess that's one of my answers too. <laughs> Back to the money thing. Yeah, because you're right. You can have more than just going into the bank and stealing the money out of the bank. You can electronically take those funds now yeah. these days. Um, I actually was talking to the Nigerian prince, and I was going to send him some money. He's going <laughs> to wire me back some money. I'm going to use it for the show. I'm really excited. I won that in uh, oh, in wow. uh, 2003, and I still haven't got it yet. So oh, good okay. luck. Maybe it was a different prince. How many princes are there over there? Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a new one now. Speaking of that Nigerian prince, <laughs> what are some of the worst heist films? You know, there got to be some bad ones out there. And oh, man. I'll start us off. Worst, tr- and uh, I, I, I haven't seen. I guess a lot of the bad ones. I haven't seen Swordfish. I haven't seen stuff like that. Right? Entrapment. I did see. That's pretty bad. Right? But one of the absolute worst heist films ever is actually one of my favorites. And it didn't make my top five because it is so bad, but it is one of my favorites, and it's Hudson Hawk. Oh, my goodness. Love that I film. love that fucking movie, but it is a terrible movie. But I absolutely love it, so I'm going to say Hudson Hawk. But I want to know what you guys think. Timothy, it, worst heist films. Well, j- just to mention that, doesn't doesn't Bruce Willis, or don't they use a, a grappling hook in the movie? In, in... I think so, yeah. Because like you never see that in films anymore, like, and, and that just kind of amazes me. It's a disturbing just, lack just of grappling hook that. in today's film. But <laughs> but I do want to mention. Um, I I don't know if I wanted to talk about the remake, but uh, the the original Point Break. Um, I with, haven't seen the remake, but I do not. Yeah, I don't like the original that much. I mean, yeah. I mean, why do people love it so? The, much? the only thing about it that is really noteworthy is just the ex presidents and just. Having that part that that bank robbing those badass masks, yeah, which oh, they don't is. even have in the new film. <laughs> but but why do you combine thrill seekers with this this surfing stoner guy uh, <laughs> that's played by uh, Patrick Swayze when um, another brilliant performance? Yeah, I I just don't understand his uh, hair though. His hair. Yeah, yeah. Well, carried yeah, the film. That was definitely. <laughs> That should be in the Smithsonian somewhere. Somehow. So you don't think that movie's that great? No, it doesn't have an, a lot of substance. It really is just kind of, it, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that sort of like pre GoPro and like we can do these awesome like <laughs> extreme sports stuff. 
and record it. But we can't just sell that. Uh, how about we package with a heist film? That's popular now. Fuck it. Let's you know, do it. <laughs> it was directed by a fantastic director, Catherine Bigelow. He did Hurt Locker and Near Dark, Zero Dark hmm. Thirty. Lots of good <laughs> good movies, you know. But I just I just never got Point Break. But it's an incredibly successful and popular film, and, and even now a cult film. Yeah. And yeah, they just remade it. Yeah. It's a big deal. Justin, what are some of the worst high films? <laughs> you know, you remember what my answer was last time we did a worst films movie list. And it's hard for me to, to do that. Yeah, that's right. The 80s horror. You said you couldn't really... You, you don't want to... Someone put their heart and soul into yeah. it. You don't want to say the worst. And it's not that I'm... In this category specifically, I mean, there are some movies, obviously, I've seen, and I'm like, oh, that's garbage. <laughs> But uh, any heist movie that I've ever taken the time to sit down and watch, I've liked. I've yeah. enjoyed. I would and, say most of the ones I've watched are good. That's yeah. why it was hard. I mean, Entrapment, maybe. I can pick on that, but... Yeah. So I, you have nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess uh, Swordfish, if that's bad. Uh, okay. <laughs> is, is this something well, you have this. to do as any... a member of the Strink Screen Actors Guild or something? I'm like, not you're a not member. allowed? I don't have a card yet. Okay. No, but ser- like any uh, any of the high school They've rejected I've ever them seen. every time because they're like, you talk shit about these movies on this podcast. <laughs> it's your fault, Robbie. Why John you Travolta has to prove everybody. No, but any, high, any the, all the highest movies that I can think of that I've ever seen, um, I guess Home Alone 3. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Home Alone 3, you remember that cute kid? Well, you know who looked oh. exactly like him as a child? Not John Holshue. Oh. What's your favorite heist? I mean, worst, actually, heist film. I did look a little bit like the other kid. Not Macaulay Culkin, but the other kid. That, yeah, that, that other one that was in no, a couple have, like since paper towel commercials or something. You know Scarlett Johansson was in that, right? Part 3? Yeah. I've never seen it, dude. I'm I sorry. Never. If it doesn't have Joe Pesci in it, I'm out. Were, did you look like Fred Savage when you were younger? I look, look like, like Fred Savage's friend from the Wonder Years. Oh my God! No, not Paul. The, uh, I didn't want to bring that up. I want to say Millhouse. What was that kid's name? Because Millhouse is based on him. <laughs> I don't know, but there was that rumor that it was Marilyn Manson. Yeah, that which Marilyn. Is yeah. Manson. Oh yeah. Um, I was gonna say I'm not a big fan of most of the remakes. I I don't. I kind of why why. Why do you like Point Break or not? Why we need a remake? No, because they remade Ocean's Eleven, and I know that, that was the film only because one. Of that. No, withstanding Italian Job. People know that meh. film. People know the original it's because of the remake. That's sad. Thomas Plus, Crown Affair. Like I said, John, there's only a certain amount of things that people are interested in watching other people steal. So, I mean, are you just gonna? Gone, you could. gone in I'm, sixty seconds. Right? I, I'm with you on most remakes. Gone in sixty seconds. I know that movie, even though I haven't seen it, because of the remake, which I like. I love all of these remakes that I've seen, my, <coughs> minus Thomas Crown Affair. Okay. But yeah. the remakes that I've seen, I really like. So I'm, I'm with you on remakes, but not on heist films. Not on all remakes, but there's some that just, again, don't feel needed. What in particular? I was going to say The Italian Job. Uh, I've what never purpose? seen either. So I'm Okay, not, I don't I'm know what purpose the that. remake served. Great cast. Just, just I don't understand the purpose. And if you like that film more than the original, it's supposed to have. I, I haven't seen either. I've seen the original, but uh, the new one is supposed I think to have. Y- you're more... like three quarters through the original <laughs> right now. <laughs> we'll we'll skip that conversation. <laughs> but uh, the new one is supposed to have some really cool action and chase sequences right in the minis. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing feels like a big mini commercial. Yeah, and maybe well, that's who. Maybe it was like, financed by BMW. The, the yeah. original. I didn't realize until I watched it. But there are the, only so many cars <laughs> in Europe, John. <laughs> the third one's going to be about Kia Souls. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the American job. Korean uh, or job. Korean job. Yeah. Yeah. Korean yeah. job. Um, I didn't realize until I watched it. But the original Italian job is actually more comedy than anything else. Like it's really Benny Hill is one of the main characters. <laughs> And I did not Does it even speed up. And, dun, 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 I kept li- I kept waiting for that to happen, like when they're driving around in the. I think it's the post credit sequence, right? <laughs> Just wait for it, man. Trust me. Yeah, but that's what you, if you remake something like this, you can definitely really easily throw it into a different genre and have something completely different so you don't like the remakes john i just don't feel they're necessary i would love to see some of these original Aside from oceans i don't think oceans bad by any means what about gone gone in 60 seconds it's gone's okay i i just feel like i would love to see these films and re-released <coughs> i want to see obviously they're they're you know the 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 film uh it wasn't preserved well, and you you know, but with uh, them restoring films, I'd love to see some of these 
the original Italian job on the big screen. I'd love to see. They do the original. Or well, are you I'm talking saying, about in theaters? In the theaters, theatrical. At least. Yeah, and you you still get some smaller uh, independent houses that do stuff like this or Alamo Draft House. But I'd like to see some of these. You know, I hell, I'd like to see Point Break again. On the big screen with the original <laughs> cast. Oh, maybe we should get a Kickstarter going up to get the uh, Pop Culture Philosophers Theater going. Let's do it. Oh, my. Let's mm. do it. So so some of the remakes are, are, are not bad by any means. Yeah. And I'm not panning all remakes. I just sometimes I, I would expect some originality. But you're right. These were films that were popular. And you can only steal so much. And so that's where you get some of that. And you do get some great performances by some of these. So I'm not bashing the, the crew. Uh, <coughs> but I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of remakes in general. And back to the social media, John, we asked everybody what their favorite heist films are. Please tell us some of the ingenious responses. Brett and Whaley said Snatch. Robert Rogers said Ant-Man. Rob Williams said Inside Man. Andre Smith said The Dark Knight. That doesn't count. That's the first <laughs> 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Bobby Hessler said Ocean's Eleven. Dustin Ward said Ocean's Eleven or Thomas Crown Affair. Chris Wallace said The Sting, Kelly's Heroes, and Office Space. Great picks. I actually forgot about Office Space. It wouldn't be in my top five, but it, it fits yeah. that in a great film. Uh, Christopher <laughs> Lowry said Tower Heist or Italian Job. <laughs> Mike Matthews said Italian Job. The Voice. Thaddeus the House. Mike said, in particular, the, the, the original Italian Job. Just... He would want me to clarify. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. did. He did clarify. Nineteen sixty nine. Thaddeus House. Uh, Tony said. House. Uh, taking House. of Pelham one, two or three. Wait, is taking it, of Pelham one, two, three. It's a, it's <laughs> a John Carpenter <laughs> film, John. Come on. It wasn't a secret. Like, I can't decide. <laughs> a second or third. <laughs> nice. The whole trilogy. <laughs> well, everybody keeps putting multiple answers instead of one, and so it threw me off. Um. He also said Inside Man. Uh, and Chris Harris said Milk Money. And James Donahoe again said uh, Reindeer Games. Reindeer Games? <laughs> Fuck you, James. Are you trolling us? Are I, you serious? I've got another Ben Affleck movie, and it's not Reindeer Games. <laughs> <laughs> it better not be Reindeer Games 2. Speaking of Reindeer Games 2, we'll be talking about that coming up. No, we won't. No, not at all. <laughs> But Timothy Dalton's going to be in it, I've heard. Actually, <laughs> we're coming right back with, of course, the Pop Culture Philosopher's personal top five heist films of all time. When yeah. we get back from this break, check us out. Pop Culture Philosophers. Be right back. Hey guys, Rock and Robbie here. I want to thank you for all of your support. Whether you check us out on YouTube, whether you listen to the podcast, which obviously you are doing right now, or if you come check us out at our live events. For instance, coming up we have our appearance at the Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo at the JC's building on March 19th. That is a Saturday. Be sure to come and check us out. You might get some free stuff and help out support pop culture philosophers. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like us on Facebook. Be sure to check out the website all the time. We got blogs coming up and we got more podcasts, old school podcasts and new school. So thank you for your support and please continue your support and check us out on YouTube, Facebook, our website, popculturephilosophers.com and at the Huntsville Comics and Pop Culture Expo in Huntsville, Alabama, March 19th. Welcome back to Pop Culture Philosophers. Uh, we're about to get to the top five, but first, I want to let everybody listening know that uh, we're going to be at the Huntsville Comics and Pop Culture Expo Saturday, March 19th at the JC's building, uh, right next to the Deep Booth. So come see us, hang out. Uh, we might have stuff to sell. Just come and just swing by and talk to us, man. All right, John, we went to the social media as we've been talking all night about. You guys are fans, our friends. You guys have some really good answers. We're, we're thankful for each and every single one of you. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the PCP Show. Amanda Whitley 
said, catch me if you can. If that counts, and it does count. That's a good movie. Great pick. Chris Kent said the usual suspects. Now, John, we did not decide to include this movie in our top five. So explain. Well, there's definitely a heist in the film. But A, the film's not actually about a heist per se. And then on top of that, the person telling you this story about the heist could be fabricating the whole thing. Yes. So, so we were we were on the bench about it whether it should be included or not, and we decided not to include it because there's so many other well defined. Clearly, this is a heist film, but still, nonetheless, Usual Suspects, great film, great film, and on a lot of other people's great heist <laughs> films list. Jeremy Day, good friend of ours, said Inception. Couldn't agree with you more, homie. Mm-hmm. Just wait and see. Scott Green said Goodfellas. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know about it. Casino. I see. But I don't know. Okay. O.J. Simpson, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels, Snatch, and the Ocean series. Great picks. Great picks. Michael Engelbrecht said, Heat, knowing hell to go wrong with that cast. Absolutely. Blood, bath, all, all together. Justin Evans said, The new Mad Max film. Mm, interesting. Didn't think about that that way, but it kind of is. And Gone in 60 Seconds. I don't know which one he's talking about. But I'm sure it's the Nicolas Cage one. And best answer we had of the night, Nigel Payne. Dude, where's my car? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys for checking out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Be sure to like and subscribe and share. And now I think John is going to lead us to the moment. The meat and the potatoes. The peas and carrots are out of the way. We've had the salad. We've had the calamari, even. But we haven't had the meat and potatoes. I'm allergic to shellfish. I'm sorry. (laughs) Is a calamari shellfish? I'm just teasing. I have no (laughs) idea. (laughs) Yes, the meat and potatoes, which you've been waiting for, are top five favorite heist films. Hopefully you've been waiting for it. (laughs) It's at the end of the show. So we're actually going to start with uh, Timothy Groman. What is your top five favorite heist films in descending order, please, sir? Favorite. I know it's probably hard to get down just to top, just to five. Your favorite top five. Well, yeah, it was it was definitely difficult because I've been watching quite a bit of different films. Um, but I must say, I'm not very much into um, the originals. And um, by saying that, uh, number five, uh, the score. Um, number four, uh, The Town. Number three, uh, the remake, 2001 Ocean's Eleven. Number two, Inside Man. And number one is Reservoir Dogs. So your favorite Reservoir Dogs, a film that we discussed before, they don't actually show the heist. No, they do not, but they build up uh, quite a bit of the... Um, I, I, I would like to say it's called a snafu with the getaway um uh, obviously i like i said in, in earlier in the podcast i love a bloodbath um tarantino just can't do wrong it was his first film um just just the whole like pop culture references uh sounds of the 70s it's oh yeah man the the <laughs> soundtrack the style was there from yeah. the beginning his his directorial debut it the is. style is there yeah, and the mm-hmm. cast. What a cast. I love the cast. And I love Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink is the awesomest guy in life. Isn't that Steve Buscemi who plays yeah, Mr. Pink? Exactly. All right, you, your number two was Inside Man. Now, that's a film I've never seen, but I know it's a Spike Lee joint. And I really do like the majority of the films of his that I have seen. Um, elaborate on Inside Man. Why Inside Man? Because I'm not super familiar with it, but I know our listeners are. Okay, so so the film is actually in 2006, but they're depicting what the post 9/11. Um, there's a lot of race relations and just the fact that well, okay, I'm, I I don't want to go off on a rant, but yeah, there's a lot of items here that indicate police. Um, <laughs> what do you want to call it? Uh, police, not uh, ignorance, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, generally. You, you see Spike Lee always explaining how re- race relations happen and and it being a heist film like uh, certain certain religious 
backgrounds and certain people in, in the city of New York, they're, they're going to be displayed. But uh, as far as, you know, some of the brutality that happens in it is misconstrued. And this is, this is why I always think that Inside Man was over because Denzel Washington, you know, him being the FBI agent he is, and just trying to talk back and forth the, the banter with, um, with uh, Owens is, is amazing. So you've talked about, we talked about Ocean's Eleven already, which is in your favorites. And we've talked about the score extensively and the town. I see what's on your list. I love the town. Yeah, I, I do as well. I mean, the reason why I like the town, it was produced and I believe directed by Ben Affleck. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, and as I hear, uh, one of our, uh, I guess, uh, podcast alum, uh, philosophers have to be Jelani and, uh, I'm sorry, Jelani. I really like this film. So uh, if you don't like Ben Affleck, I guess I got two words for you. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of two words for you, Justin, <laughs> what about your top five favorite heist films of all time? Oh, man. We've been talking about so many good ones that I'm going to go in reverse order and blow your mind because I know my number five is going to freak you out a little bit. <laughs> my number one favorite is Ocean's Eleven, the remake because i haven't seen the original it's just fantastic cast ensemble okay um number two is the italian job the original the original which you just finished just, like five <laughs> minutes ago. yeah i really really have i've seen bits and pieces of it over the time he's but got fond just, memories of it from just now it's got all the elements it's got the really 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 elaborate plan and then they follow through with it, and it's got comedy in it. It's, I don't know, it's great, great movie. Uh, my number three is Bank Job. Okay, I've never Jason based Statham. On a, yeah, Jason Statham. Based on a true story, it's a, yeah. one of those more yeah. serious films. Yeah, serious ish. <laughs> well, he's more serious. It's not like an action film, and it's not a comedy. Yeah. It's not. Um, uh, what's the word? Like obscenely goofy in some of the fights and stuff like, like transporter that. Too. yeah <laughs> yeah but no it's really it's really good and what makes it funnier is they they're they're all amateurs <laughs> trying to pull this heist off um number four lock stock okay great film great film dude. fantastic guy Ritchie's debut i believe mm -hmm. and sting is in that movie Really? Well, yeah, he's the dad. Or oh, really? It's your fucking it's number four. It's been a while four. since you I've seen it. The, mu the I musician didn't know or the wrestler? It? Yeah, the musician. The, oh, okay. the yeah. police, right? Which yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, okay. He's the, the dad that owns the bar. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the movie since 2009. Yeah. Great movie. So a l and, ton of great characters. And, and totally inverting the top five here, Justin, you're going to blow us away with your number five, not your number one. Yeah. Because I'm going to just, I've been thinking about this all day, and I'm just going to go ahead and rip Three Kings off there and put in Good choice. the episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine <laughs> what? called Bada Bing Bada Bang, because an episode of a TV show is pretty much a short <laughs> film. We'll just cut all of your shit out tonight, Justin. <laughs> go <on> ahead. <laughs> Robbie, what would be your top five? Uh, my number five. Guy Ritchie film from 2000 Snatch. I love Lockstock. I think Snatch is a little bit better. Number four, mm. Reservoir Dogs. Tarantino, Nuff Said, 1992. I mentioned this earlier. Steven Soderbergh, 98, Out of Sight. Love that movie. Love the love story, to be yeah. honest with you. The romance within. And a lot of heist films have romances. That's the heist film that has... The most significant romance to me, I don't know. I really like George Clooney. That's also based on an Elmer Leonard yeah, novel, Elmer right? Leonard like novel. Jackie Brown. And, and okay. Michael Keaton, your beloved. Yeah, reprises a small role. From Jackie Brown. Yeah. So, yeah. Really, and one of the few. I did good, not know that. Yeah. One of the few good movies with Jennifer Lopez. Number two, <laughs> Christopher Nolan. Anytime I can get Christopher Nolan on a top five, I'm down. 2010 blew my mind. Inception. Yeah. Blew my mind. Love that movie. So great. And number one. Yeah, it's cliche. Who cares? Soderbergh, 2001, Ocean's Eleven. Love that movie. It's a remake, mm -hmm. but it's great. Great cast. Brad Pitt, Matt Damon. If I had to say one thing about that movie, the subtle humor in that movie. 
Brad Pitt is eating some ridiculous thing in every single scene, and he gets heartburn at the end of the film. Dude, that cracks me up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That cracks me up. That movie's so cool. <laughs> Danny Ocean story, you know, with Julia Roberts, Andy Garcia, who I like ever since I saw Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. Great film. An underappreciated film. Phenomenal film. Great cast overall. Just not him. Great cast overall. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I really like Ocean's Eleven. Th that speaks to me. I really like it. I, I think, I believe, like, Andy Garcia plays a great antagonist. And and just the way that and he's a robot in the sequels too, you know. And I'm not the biggest Ocean's Twelve fan. It's okay. I like it. Yeah, it's all right. But Ocean's Thirteen is actually delightful. I would say I really like Ocean's Thirteen. Uh, Twelve is all right, but I don't I don't mind it. I really like that Was... whole. I'm I like Soderbergh. I really do. I mean, I love shit like Solaris. You know, I, I love silly stuff like Bubble. You know, I I, I like a lot of his films and. Out of Sight and Ocean's Eleven really speak to me. Inception is is brilliant, and and Snatch, and Reservoir Dogs, great cast, just fantastic films. Hammer Time, whole shit. What are your top five? This man? was a hard one to do, man. This was such a hard one to do because yeah, there's so thought, many great. We films. thought eighties horror was yeah. Hard. So number five is going to be The Lookout. With uh. I've never seen that, but you mentioned that with endearment. So I think it's a great film. It's it's Jeff Daniels, and the main character is actually played by Joseph Gordon Levitt, and he actually has an issue with the memory, and he just like he's just like the mop boy at a bank, and he gets roped into this thing. It's it's phenomenal. It's a great film. Uh, my number four is actually gonna my number four is gonna be a film that we talked about earlier, which is a phenomenal Robert Redford film, which is Sneakers. Ah, you guys thought I was going to say The Sting, didn't you? <laughs> but Sneakers is great. I don't think everybody here has seen Sneakers. Right. And Sneakers, it's great cast, too. It's got Rob Redford, Sidney Poitier, uh, Dan Aykroyd, River Phoenix. And again, they steal this encryption box that they think they're stealing for the U.S. government. And come to find out, I think they stole it for the Russians. And so it's just everything that unfolds from there. So it's just a cool film. Hmm. Uh, my number three is going to be The Town, which we discussed briefly already. You heard that, Jelani. The Town. Such a great film, man. And that was the first film... You know why I don't like that movie? Why? Boston. Boston. Red Sox. Red Sox. <laughs> that was the first film that I saw... Uh, what's the archer's name? Uh, Jeremy Renner. Yeah, That's the first Renner. film I ever saw with him, or at least cognizant of who he was. And okay. I hated him from that film. That's how good a job he did. Yeah, you're even other to. films afterwards, I'm like, oh, this no, it, it's a good film. It's yeah. a good film. I thought you were going to talk trash about John Hamm because I mean, he's just like that pretty boy FBI agent that just wants <laughs> oh, yeah. to do all wrong. Alpha, alpha dog. I'm sorry, excuse me. Love the town, but we all agreed, great film, great film, Jelani. <laughs> number two is going to be Reservoir Dogs. Oh, you're number made, two. Made I made everybody's be one. Made everybody's list. I love Reservoir Dogs. Didn't my, make mine. my favorite Tarantino film is Reservoir Dogs. Let me tell you this. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on a second. That's okay, that's Tarantino another film. podcast. That's another podcast. But let me tell you this real quick. I worked with this motherfucker, Hammer Time Holshoe, at Hollywood 16, then 18, oh. back in the day, right? And he told me Reservoir Dogs was fantastic. I have seen Pulp Fiction at this point. I have not seen Reservoir Dogs. I went out and bought this motherfucker, got carded to buy it at Walmart. <laughs> okay. Reservoir Dogs on VHS on this man's recommendation back in the early, like 99. Yeah. It was 99. Yeah, early 2000s, early, like 99, and changed my life. So, but you're number two. That's my number two. It doesn't show the heist, but it's, it's brilliant. It is a great film, great cast, great music we talked about. Um, became a huge Tim Roth fan after that. And it's not told linearly, which apparently The Killing does, and I'm really ashamed that we haven't watched that. Look out for that on a future YouTube PCP movie night. My number one is going to be Bottle Rocket. I'm a big Wes Anderson film. Yeah. And it's... it's Even the heist is just... The whole thing's a setup and a scam. Uh, so I feel bad for the guys, but uh, um, it's, it's a great... It's, it's the pacing... It's the love story with Luke Wilson. You know what I'm saying? There's more than just the heist, but the big part of it is the them getting together and getting the crew together and doing the heist ultimately is what they want to do. And uh, great cast. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Next episode, John. Next episode. We're doing DC movies. 
Do you see these nuts? No. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's too easy. Uh, bye. <laughs> DC movies, yeah. DC movies are top five DC live action films. Yeah, not movies <laughs> take place in Washington, D.C. We're talking about <laughs> yeah. detective comics, right? Yeah. DC, you the know, Batman versus company. Superman is coming out. So we're doing this podcast. We're going to talk about our top five favorite live action DC movies. We're also going to be talking about the animated films. We're going to break down the Superman and the Batman films and some of the other films, some of the flops like Green Lantern and Steel and Halle Berry's Catwoman, right? <laughs> but we're not doing a PCP movie night for Catwoman. No. <laughs> I've never seen that movie, never will. Anyway, also we're doing a Rock and Robbie coming right after that. That's right. Rock and Robbie is back and not a Halloween special. And this time we're doing magical musings on musicals and mustaches. So join us for that episode. It's going to be very very exciting. I want to thank everybody for being here. Timothy, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Final thoughts on heist movies. Uh, like I said, it's great to uh, be here talking about some thievery, some uh, well-executed plans. Well, sometimes they're not always executed, but hey, as long as you know there's some blood in it, and so be it. <coughs> Justin, thank you for being here. You are welcome. Oh, I always love having you over here in the Huntsville attic. And please, sir, final thoughts. Before we kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Your last statement. Yeah. As I stated at the beginning of the podcast, the great thing about heist movies is if you and a couple other people you know that are really good at stuff put your minds together and think real hard, you can do anything. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to thank all you listeners for joining us. I am Rock and Robbie Billis. Be sure to check us out on YouTube and please subscribe. We got Robbie Rance. We got Super Mythology. We got Pop Culture Philosophers podcast previews, full episodes, all you would want and more on YouTube. And my final thought, crime doesn't pay, but making movies about it sure does. I can't top that. I wish you. <laughs> I wish you would had the last. I wish you had the last thing. Um. Yeah, I would uh, say. Uh, um. Going with Goldsmith said, man. I mean, you're watching these heist movies. Um. If anything, you should take away from this podcast, take away from these movies is. Uh, I think, go out and rob a bank. <laughs> you've got the tools. You've learned it. Hell, they show you on YouTube how to pick a lock. So uh, use this. Use these tools. We man. could go and steal 150 million dollars from the Bellagio, or six <laughs> billion dollars. Six billion dollars. Six billion. <laughs> but uh, thanks for listening, uh, tuning in. Uh, join us uh, next time, same PCP channel, same PCP time. Uh, actually, we have a website, so you don't. Have to, <laughs> there's no specific time. So we have new shows, old shows. Check out the site www.popculturephilosophers.com. Thank you.